there guys, Gary here for GenVFX, just back with another little tutorial. Not really a tutorial this time, it's definitely a one-to-one, -one, but it has to use a little bit more than just the one, so you can see the effect of it. Uh, today we're going to be talking about, over here in the modifiers, we're back here, we're going to talk about something here called Vertex Weight Proximity. Now this is really, really lovely little tool. Uh, we have done some of this already. We've done UV project, we've done, we haven't done UV warp. Uh, we've done UV, UV, UV uh, weight edit, I think. Yes, we have. And uh, vertex weight proximity is pretty much the next one that I want to talk about on here. And the reason for that is because of how fancy and wonderful it is, specifically for motion graphics. It's actually uh, very, very good for doing the sort of things that you would really like to do where you drive something on another object. And that is basically what this is all about. So I'm actually, first I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of the default cube. Yes, I am. There it goes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just close a little bit on this here. Let's try and get this done as quickly as we can, because yeah, why not? When I do them quicker, I think we get better results. So mesh here, we're gonna create a grid. We're gonna very quickly pop on here. We're gonna pop on the uh, wireframe so I can see what we've got. And let's go into edit mode first of all, so we go uh, tab on the keyboard, we go to edge and we go subdivide and I'm going to do another subdivide as well just we've got lots and lots of vertices and now I'm going to go scale this by 4, so we go S4 so that's now uh, all lovely and still still applies, so if I come over here you can see location set, rotation set, scale is set and the dimensions are still approximately what they should be which is it's 8 meters by 8 meters square so that's good. I'm going to pop that away, don't necessarily need that quite so much right now so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this grid and I'm going to go down here to our vertex groups and I'm going to create a vertex group here and I'm going to call it shifty because I like I like the way the idea of being shifty. So but let's go into edit mode and we've got all those lovely points and now we can assign something to this. I'm going to go assign. So if I deselect everything and press select, that's what's in there. Every single point is in there and that's, that's great, that's great. So let's go back to the modifier and go back to the object mode and I'm going to add to this I'm just going to add right now. I'm going to add a displace actually. Let's do it this way. Let's add the displacers. Basically, I want to displace all the points on this surface. Now I can do that by putting a displacement node on that. Click on the texture button, then going down here, and you can see displace and texture. And I'm going to change this to a noise. No, let's actually let's go my own favourite. Let's go to a Musgrave. Let's scale this up, and then let's start to increase the dimension. And we need to sort of kind of. Make it a little bit more, make it a little bit more pretty. Now the intensity that's pretty high, so let's bring that down so we get some nice lumpy bits. There you go. So we've now got a nice, a nice kind of design. I kind of like that. That's not so bad. I could in fact go in here and uh, in the edit mode, and I might just subdivide this one more time and then go back to object mode. There you go. So this nice, it's a nicely sort of shape, and let's just basically smooth shape that. There you go. So that's now displaced. Now imagine I wanted only some of this to be displaced at one particular given time. I would think, well, how do I do that? Well, I've got a vertex group, which is in here. And let's say we set that to the vertex group. Now, obviously, the vertex group is all of those vertices. And because I subdivided those vertices that were already there, they're still also part of the group because they basically came from the original grouped one. So they take the values. So if I go back and show you very quickly what I mean. If I go back to edit mode and I deselect the shifty and the select shifty, you see it's got all the points in. So that's the reason why the actual displacement isn't going all fluff there. But say I want to use an object to make sure that I can drive the height of this. Well, this is where vertex weight proximity comes in. But you have to be careful about how you do it. It has to be the very much the first thing in your modifier stack, but thankfully. As has been very obvious in the last few releases, changing the order of things in the modifier stack is no longer the matter of pressing an arrow up and down and praying. You can drag this thing around the entire modifier stack. So if I go in here and I add the vertex weight proximity, if I had a bunch of other things after this, I'd have to go arrow, 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 arrow. But now I just go, whoop, let's just shift that and put it up there. Now what this has in it, just to quickly go over it, it's got a vertex group, and that means what vertices do you want to be affected, what do you want their weight to be adjusted by, that's the group. Now, fortunately for us, the, the weight, the group, the vertex group is shifty. It's all there. And the target object, the object that's going to actually drive that level of whatever you're doing with your weights, because this is a basically, this is using the weights here. We're going to adjust whether it's a zero or one here, whether it's basically full on or, or, or off. And so we need an object to drive this. 
Now it could be an empty, it could be uh, a polygon, it could be anything, but I'm gonna add an empty just because they're quite nice and they don't render, which is always a plus. So I'm gonna move this, in fact, no, let's leave it in the middle, might as well. Let's go back over here to our modifier here. And I'm gonna set that to be the empty. And you can see that that's, whoa, there we go. That is now in there. And we've got lowest value is zero and the highest value is one. So if I take the empty and I move this away, it's saying everything is displaced. And if I move this down, it says when it's literally at its lowest point to the object, it's zero. Now it's been a bit difficult to actually generate what looks like zero there, but that's coming from the object. So what it's doing, it's saying, right, I'm looking at this entire object. If we go back to here, that's saying this entire object in this proximity, all the vertices in that group, the whole object is being affected at the same time. So it's not specific in where, in relation to where that empty actually is. It's just how many units away from the center of your object. So if I pull this up from the middle, all of that comes in. So basically the displacement value, the value is basically one. And as I bring it down, the closer to it, it then goes to zero. Now, obviously you want that to be the other way around, don't you? Of course, who doesn't? That's the point. So the lowest value we set that to one and the highest value we set that to zero. So essentially what we're doing is we're just reversing the process, which is great. But still, it's doing it to the entire object. I want it in relation to the proximity, in relation to that. Now, the reason for that is if we look back here, we've got the proximity mode set to object. With it set to object, what well, that means is it does the everything with the entire object. If we change that to geometry on the proximity node, if I bring this down, it does it in the area around the node. So if I move this, it moves it in and out of the object. So that is a nice way of doing it. And obviously, we have a value of zero and one. So what happens if we want to make that slightly bigger? Well, we just increase the area of the lowest and then you'll notice as well there's a little bit of fall off going on there so it's quite nice so if i take this and i go ooh, look at that it's running it all the way through through the object and it's like leaving this lovely displacement but only in relation to objects so if i move it that way move it that way it takes it and again if i move it up and down it also puts it in and takes it out it's literally the regional parts of the geometry in relation to the empty and that is what you really want now what we can do as well is we can change that to the edge and the face it doesn't really change a huge amount but you can normalize the weights and what that does is it basically then forces it to go a little bit more like zero and one but oops, didn't want to do that but what it does do it means that regionally you've still got you've still got your fall off which you can of course change but in the moment the fall off on this is linear we can change it to a custom curve so we can increase the value here so you can see it's taking more up there, or if I had to push it the other way, see, it's got an even tighter fall off. So you can actually, but you can, a lot of these are actually in here anyway, so it's like a sharp. So the sharp is kind of pretty much what I had before. Don't want to move that, just want to move the empty. Let's move that again. If I move this over here, there we go. And then if I go back to my grid, and I said, let's change that to a smooth, you can see again, well, let's make this really reach a little bit bigger. There you go. And then we'll make that a root, which essentially is a little bit, it's a little bit like a sharp, but it's kind of quite tight into it. But it's quite nice, not quite nice, but then sphere again, similar kind of thing, really pretty much, or random, which actually, oh, I keep on growing the wrong thing. So actually that's a little bit more weird, but actually it's almost like having a secondary layer of displacement, just, a little bit more regional, which is actually really quite useful, really quite nice, quite tasty, if I do say so myself. And that pretty much is how you use the uh, vertex weight proximity. As I said, it was never going to be a long one, never going to be a long one. But the beauty of this, of course, is that you can kind of take anything you want to like this empty. We can shift this over here and I'm going to change this. Actually, let's change how it works from um, let's leave it on. Let's put it on vertex. I'll knock it down a bit to the lowest, and let's not have a no, let's not have a median step. Ooh, no, let's just leave it. Take it back to linear for the sake of argument. And what I can do is I can create, I can add in here. Let's just say add another empty. Let's add a circle, and I can take my other empty, 
and I can use shift and drag and drop them onto this empty and then if I run a, run a rotation on this it rotates it around rotates our empty around the origin so it takes the world position of our of our empty our original empty into consideration and not its local position from where it's attached to the other object which actually is a really really nice thing because it means you just have a little bit more scope to do things so there you have it really i mean that's it it's a, a very very simple little tool but i mean imagine if you have something not necessarily this level of displacement or maybe you have um, a different textural displacement in there you can drive it where it starts you can drive the amount of it and of course you can also animate the displacement um, so you can generate lots of like you can use a Vorano and get cracks at all sorts of limits and stuff like that so it's just it, it's just wonderful it's a beautiful little tool and um, I hope you use it and if you do I hope you tell me what you've done with it or at least show it and send it to me um, I very very happy to do anything anyone wants to come up with as an idea um, there is a, a couple of things I want to do one is about some of the extra objects because they're kind of they're in there unless you turn them on you're not going to use them but actually one or two of them are just so good that we need to talk about them so i might just do one where a tutorial where we just talk about those extra objects once they're turned on what they can be used for how you do things with them um, you'd be surprised for example the wall that i had in the last one uh, was actually created using one of the extra objects which essentially does create walls but not just straight ones oh Oh, I'm getting chills just thinking about it. Right. Okay, guys, I'm going to go. Um, I will speak to you soon. Have a wonderful week and uh, stay safe. And uh, please subscribe. And if you do subscribe as well, please tell your friends about this. If you think it's of any use to them, pass on the word. I love the fact that people have been getting in contact with me. I love the fact I'm getting more subscribers. Wasn't expecting any. I've passed the 50 mark. That makes me very happy. Um, look after yourselves, guys, and I will speak to you soon. Bye.